Welcome to uh, the Modern Day Warrior program. Today we got Vidit Argawal, who came in from Uber and has an awesome title of being the first Uber employee in Asia. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thanks a lot, Kimbo. Vidit, you, you actually were in UBS, an investment bank, before you got into uh, Uber. In three sentences, describe or share with us who you are, who you help, and how you do it. Right, so my name is Vidit Agarwal. I'm the strategic finance manager at Uber. Um, it's a fancy title, but what I do is my main role is helping drivers become entrepreneurs. So I work with various banks, various organizations across Asia and help drivers get funding to become entrepreneurs to get a car. That's my role. So you went from a really big corporation, an investment bank, UBS, to one of the biggest startups in the world right now, Uber. Can I ask you, what kind of skill sets did you develop in UBS that allow you to transition and succeed in Uber? It's funny you still call it startup, but one of the key skills which I developed at UBS was people management. In UBS, you were managing so many people upward, downward. You, know, you were working with a lot of people and keeping your stakeholders happy and making sure you are reaching, you're you know, fulfilling the commitments is very important. And that's when I transitioned into Uber, when I was the only employee in this part of the world. I was working with HQ in San Francisco. And just that experience of working with people, making sure things happen, right, was great. And that was the key skill that helped me to transition between these two roles. Is there a specific example um, about people skill sets that really helped you when you got into Uber? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, since I was the only person here and I was working in a very different time zone, I was working in SF time zone, right? So just communicating, that communication was very important to make sure that people in that part of the world understand what's happening in Asia. That's the biggest challenge because when you're sitting in SF, Asia means a very big country for you. And people don't understand there's so many cultures, there's so many languages. There's a big challenge out here. You know? And just learning from UBS that how to manage people, I could implement that skill and make sure my HQ was happy with the work I was doing. Can I ask you, what was the toughest part of transitioning from a big corporate? I think the biggest was that when I was seated in UBS, there were a thousand people around me, right? So if there was a problem, they were shared by a thousand people. But when I moved to Uber, I was the owner of the whole program. I w if there was a problem, I would own it. I had to fix it. Right? And that was the biggest challenge because when you're in a bank, you've got a manager, and he's got a manager, and he's got a manager. But at Uber, I was the owner of the whole thing. And just standing up and taking that ownership and making it happen was my biggest challenge. So what would you say the skill set was needed for you to succeed as the only employee at that time in Asia? The ownership piece is very important and being a leader. Right? Sometimes you don't need a team of 20 people to lead. You just have to stand up to the occasion, take your chances, you know, be smart, act quickly and just move forward. Taking calculated risk? T taking calculated that. risk. That's a very important thing. Being very strategic in the way you think about things. Right? You could do a lot of things there, but at the same time, just realizing what's the need of the R and making the most calculated decision with the data you provided with, that is the key. Let's say five years ago, 10 years ago, who were you? And what kind of transformation changed you or what occurred that allowed you to become successful in Uber today? Right, I mean, when I was a kid, my one thing I really wanted to become in life was a businessman because I didn't even know the word entrepreneurship. When I came to Singapore, I realized that there's a huge avenue of being different, experimenting what you want, taking chances. I think I started doing that, learning from my mistakes. Over time, I you know, spent some time at Stanford, came back, joined a bank, learned a lot. Very different environment, but learned to not. And then took my challenge. A lot of people wouldn't have quit a stable job like UBS and joined a startup which nobody knew. Right? When I joined, my family thought I was joining a taxi operator job. <laughs> and everyone laughed at me, but I believed in the company, had known that this company would do something different. So taking the risk was very important that time. And I think that's wherever I am today, I think I'm still very early in my career, I'm still learning, but taking risk has really helped me to reach here today. Were you always a risk taker, can I ask? I come from a small town, right? And what happens is when you have very little, you can do anything you want. There's very little to lose. And I've always been in that phase. When I came to Singapore, it was a good experiment. It was like, I was first time abroad. I had never even taken a plane ride. Right? So it was a good experience. And then I was like, let me do something different. Let me tr test, let me try. And I think that stuck with me. So it's really helped me a lot in my career. Reflecting on what we discussed, what kind of skill sets do you think, you know, today's aspiring modern day warrior hasn't developed sufficiently? 
when you watch Uber videos online today, the key thing which we keep repeating all the time is hustle. And I'm not going to sell the company, but I think that is very, very important skill. You know, not giving up, not taking no for an answer. Keep trying, keep trying. You've got to be smart. You can't be trying and banging the wall because you're going to move it. It's not going to happen. But at the same time, if you're logical, if you believe in something, keep trying. I think that's the main skill a warrior should have. Also, you need to be, like we talked about earlier, very strategic in your approach. Right. You'll have multiple options, you'll have multiple roads in front of you, but whatever data you have, whatever options you have, whatever understanding you have, making the right decision, making the smartest decision is very important. For me, that's a recipe of success. Again, I say that because I'm very early in my career and I'm learning, but it, it really works. So you hire people in Uber. Do you see these kind of skill sets in you know, today's young professionals? A lot of them do. I mean, these, especially the concept of hustle, it depends on the environment you're in. It's very important to have smart and intelligent people around you because they shape up your personality. Mm. Right? We always say that. And a lot of people who are hustlers, who can't join Uber and make things happen, have been in that environment, have chosen the right people around them. Mm. Right? So when we look for people, we just look for very smart people. We don't look for specific skills. We believe that a lot of these skills in the industry today can be learned. Mm. But being smart, being proactive, pushing the boundaries, that's something that is very key for Uber hiring. So what skills or traits do you see that are perhaps lacking or underdeveloped in today's corporate or entrepreneurial warrior? When we hire people, I can answer on that basis. When we hire people, we look for two sorts of profiles. One, somebody who's failed, made a mistake in their career, but come up really strong, you know, like succeeded after that or a second profile who's been a success throughout, who's been success at work, who's been a success at education, success at surfing, or whatever they've done in life, they've succeeded. So people like this are very attractive for Uber. What really attracts you about the person who fails and gets back up and the person who is constantly winning? So somebody who's failed and get, uh, who got up knows how to do it. Right. And we, it happens to us all the time as a company. So somebody who's gone through that experience, who knows that failure is net, not the end of the world, is a good Uber employee. And also somebody who demonstrates success in various fields, just knows that he's a great team player, he's got the right spirit, he's got the head in its right place, and he succeeds each time. He wants, he's hungry for success. And we look for that hunger. What are three action items that people could take away today or start doing today to develop that skill in hustling? Three key items which I think defines true hustle is one is pushing the envelope. Keep trying, keep experimenting, make things happen. Two, I think being the leader. Right? A lot of times you face with problems and you see people just taking sides or not stepping up. The person who steps up through in that situation is, is, is the true hustler, is the leader. Mm. And I think three, which is very important, is having a champion's mind, always believing that you're going to win. Each time you start, when you start losing, when you start thinking you're going to lose. Right? So at Uber, one thing I've been taught is always believe you're going to win. Keep trying. Always think like a champion. So before we end off, is there anything else you'd like to just share with our audience? Yeah, I would say that, you know, at times you have your up and down. You're, you're sometimes succeeding, but you're sometimes failing as well. Right? But just don't stop uh, trying. Keep trying. Keep pushing the envelope. Keep, keep trying. You know? Don't give up. The moment you give up, it's end of story. So the whole concept of hustle and everything is important, but be believing in yourself and making it happen, you know, pushing when things are not working out for you is very important. Basically, have that resilience, right? Have that resilience, yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Vidit. Thank you for pleasure. joining us. Thanks a lot.